So, you want to be a Shura Breaker? Of course you do. That's why you clicked on this video. This isn't like other overview videos I did in the past. This is an actual guide. There's going to be a lot of yapping, so I did you the favor of chaptering the video so you can skip to the info you need. Let's start your journey into becoming a Punch God. Shura is a transliteration of the more commonly known Ashura, and was often used in religious and literary works to describe the violent natures of war and conflict. In more modern gaming works, Shura is more famously known from From Software's masterpiece game Sekiro to describe someone who would succumb to eternal bloodlust. In martial arts terms, it refers to one who follows the path of carnage and destruction in pursuit of power, immortality, fame, or fortune, and was also a common way to refer to the Japanese demigod of war. In Lost Ark, Shura is the frontal attack engraving build for the Breaker Fighter class, also known as the male gender unlocked version of the existing Scrapper. It's a fast paced non-stop action build that leverages an extremely powerful identity skill that transforms its basic attack into a whirlwind of devastating jabs and hooks. It's often compared to the famous Dempsey rule popularized in the boxing anime Hajime no Ippo, as well as One Punch Man Saitama's famous consecutive normal punches scene. Players who enjoy thrilling high octane moments with very high highs and low lows will naturally be attracted to this playstyle provided you can acclimate to the front positional playstyle of the class, its biggest deterrent. I would describe the class difficulty as low as far as mechanics go but requires a great deal of content knowledge to know how and when to commit to your burst, relying on the boss to do patterns that can't pierce through your defenses as well as keeps it from turning for more than 4 seconds. Since 40-60% to 60 of your damage output comes from this burst, it's a very all-or-nothing playstyle that rewards players who take risks. The engraving description for Way of the Shura is a novel in and of itself, so I'll just summarize the gist of it. When Way of the Shura engraving effect is at least level 1, a few passive effects occur and two new abilities become available to you. Your overall damage output and movement speed are passively increased while you're in combat, and the maximum amount of stamina and shock resource you can hold at any given time is reduced by 30%. This does not mean that you're going to get 30% less shock and stamina when attacking the enemies, this just means that the maximum amount that you can hold at any given time is 30% lower than without the engraving. Your identity is replaced with the Shura Gauge, disabling the benefit of specialization set altogether, which is purely meant for the other engraving. In order to build Shura energy for his identity gauge, a special system is put in place. Every time you alternate between a stamina skill and a shock skill, you'll gain 4% of your gauge. This 4% is on cast and isn't influenced by any stat, so you can't make it go any faster besides for casting faster. Blue skills in the Breaker's Kit are considered shock skills for the record. Yellow skills are stamina, and green skills are also shock. This means that a total of 26 skills are initially needed to fill the gauge, one to start the cycle, and then 25 more skills that each fill 4%. In total, it should always take around 25 to 30 seconds to fill the gauge, with varying time depending on skill loadout selection. There are a few classes that share this trait of being able to build identity by attacking the air, with Scrapper and Wind Fury Aromancer being the only other ones. You also gain access to two new skills, Self-Defense Fighting, default bound to the X Identity Skill button, and it serves as your main defensive ability, and Shura Finisher, which is the name of your basic attack when you enter the Shura state. Self-Defense Fighting is the most powerful defensive skill in the game. While active, you gain a 40% HP shield, 20% damage reduction, and push immunity for 2 seconds. If you are struck at any time during these 2 seconds, it will extend the effect's duration by another 3 seconds. This effect can only occur once each time you cast the shield. The cooldown of the skill is 10 seconds starting immediately after activation and can be easily tracked by a vibrant red bar that appears next to your character after use, as well as on your debuff bar. What makes this skill so powerful is that there is no activation animation for it. It can be used at any time during any other skill to provide you protection while you use that skill. This effectively means that you can give a powerful shield and push immunity to any ability in your arsenal when played correctly. Your skill and your strength as a Shura is ultimately decided by how creatively and smartly you utilize this shield. Breaker's normal basic attack sequence is a right hook into two jabs into a heavier left hook. When you enter the Shura state, his basic attack converts into Shura Finisher, which leads with two jabs, a pause, followed by 27 more jabs with each hand, ending with a powerful hook, and totaling for 57 strikes in the whole string. Entering the Shura state also deals a small amount of damage to surrounding enemies, which will put you into the combat state if you aren't already, and it also applies 6% damage synergy to targets near you for 10 seconds, and it counts as a skill for the sake of adrenaline stacking. 
Sure, a finisher also has push immunity while you're attacking with it. The sure estate does not. Once you engage the punching, it does. Self-defense fighting and Shura finisher are the bread and butter that largely define the way of the Shura. These jabs are already several times stronger than the normal basic attack. However, they gain an additional damage depending on your current crit chance. At engraving level 3, 200% of your current crit rate is also converted into raw damage for Shura finishers, jabs, and ending hook. So if you have 50% crit chance, that would be a 100% increase of damage. Note that the only crit chance that influences this bonus damage to sure a finisher must be reflected in the advanced tab of your character stats. That means debuffs to bosses that increase your crit against them do not count, and bracelet lines that increase crit but don't appear on the stat sheet also do not count, ruling out the precise line as a choice. This is a rough damage profile of how much each skill in your arsenal deals. As you can see, Flash of Light and Shura Finisher make up the lion's share of your damage composition. However, it's very important to understand that depending on the pace of the fight, Shura Finisher can contribute more or less damage. When a fight features a mechanic or a gimmick that the boss is not available on the field or is untargetable or under DR for more than 20 seconds, a Shura Breaker will use this time to shadow box the air to build the gauge, having Shura mode prepared for when the boss is ready to attack again. When fights feature several of these kinds of mechanics, sure a finisher makes up a far larger contribution. However, in fights where the boss is largely targetable for most of the fight duration, such as in Thaymine's later gates, normal skills will often make up more than 50% of your damage profile. There are two ways to build Shura, and so you're either going to use 5 damage gems or 6. 5 damage gems are used for the fast gauge build that takes Eradicate as a skill to speed up cycling. 6 damage gems take Cheongwall Dance, which will deal some damage and has a noticeably higher cooldown and cast time. In a vacuum, in Trixian, the 6 damage gem build is slightly stronger, however in real raid scenarios, especially one with many mechanics, many find the 5 damage gem setup to be a lot more comfortable and smooth to play, myself included. If you're playing sure as an alt or budget character and can only manage one high level gem, for sure a finisher, then it's strongly recommended to play the 5 damage gem build. Since the damage profile is largely made up by two skills, only two of them actually need to be high level for your damage gems. The others can be a lower level since they only comprise 20 to 40% of the damage. Of the cooldown gems, only one is very important to be high, which is the King's Advance. This skill is a low damage dash punch, which is shared with Scrapper, and existing Scrapper players are already aware that the reason why it needs to be high is because a skill has a tripod at level 10, which reduces its own cooldown by 50% when it connects with a target. Since Breaker's build uses more shock skills than stamina skills, it's important to bring this skill's cooldown as low as possible since it's the main driver for cycling stamina skills to build Shura energy. The cooldown reduction from the gem is applied to the initial cooldown on the skill before the 50% from the tripod. Shura is a crit-focused class build, which is relatively uncommon compared to spec and swiftness builds. The engraving is designed where you can't deviate from crit as a focus stat due to the additional damage from the punches. Spec doesn't affect Shura at all, and swiftness doesn't have as many benefits outside of raid captain effectiveness, since the stats from it don't really benefit Shura finisher much at all. Because Shura gets so much damage from crit and cannot rely on crit synergies from teammates to make up any of the lost crit chance, you have to get as close to 100% crit chance as possible without overcapping since crit chance over 100% does not benefit Shura Finisher. Some Breaker players will cut a crit domination bracelet to reduce the overall cost and swiftness has relatively poor scaling. You're still going to want it on your necklace, but you know, on your bracelet, that's a place where you can make a compromise. Overall, swiftness is still better for the bracelet, but it is an option to bring the price down. Domination noticeably increases damage against foes that are staggered, countered, after a weak point check, and after certain major gimmicks. There's always a very distinct sound cue when any of these occur. The engravings are set in stone and there aren't really any deviations in a completed build. As mentioned before, there are some small complications with Breaker. Because you can't use Synergy to increase your crit chance for him, he needs to get his crit chance on his own. But a max build of Breaker has 98% crit chance, meaning without Adrenaline level 2, you'll only have 93% crit chance. The main reason this is a problem is because of the 200% damage scaling on Sure Finisher from your crit chance. If you're losing 5% crit chance and 1.6% attack power, you're also losing 5.4% damage on your Sure Finisher relative to 93% crit chance. 
uh, this would be 196% bonus damage versus 186. 93 times 2 versus 98 times 2. Share Breaker requires some form of Stronghold Feast in order to reach max rate captain efficiency. At best, you'll get 11% movement speed from your Swiftness stat, 15% from the class Engraving, and 12% from Yearning. This means you'll need at least 2% from another source. Breaker doesn't need a specific food to maintain mana, so Wine from the Cruise Liner providing 3% will also work for this. Breaker provides the weakest synergy type, which is target take 6% more damage for his party. His synergy is applied from Lightning Flash and Sweep, two low cooldown skills that are frequently cycled for sure energy as well as when he activates the sure estate. As mentioned previously, he cannot be paired with crit synergy since they will not increase sure finisher's damage. There are mainly two popular skill builds for sure breaker. Most of the skills are set in stone, but where you can make a choice is between the last shock skill between Eradicate and Qiang Will Dance. Selecting the former will push your damage skew towards Sure Finisher, while selecting the latter will push the damage skew towards regular skills slightly. In a Trixian scenario, the variation using Chiang World Dance comes out slightly ahead in damage, but in real raid scenarios with boss mechanics, many people have found Eradicate to work better for them to cycle Sure Finisher quicker. In my testing, I found that Conviction and Judgment did help in reducing the total time to build Shura Energy by 1-2 to two seconds, bringing it down from 23-24 to 24 seconds to 21-22 to 22 seconds in Trixian. There weren't really many disadvantages to putting it in the kit. Lightning Strike hits 3 times, so it triggers Conviction somewhat consistently, but you'll have to remember to follow it up with Emergency in order to activate Judgment. If you don't like Conviction and Judgment, I found it perfectly fine to use Epic Galewind on Emergency, put the Legendary Bleed on Lightning Strike, and put a rare quick recharge on Sweep. It didn't seem to affect the cycle that much. Breaker doesn't run into mana issues, so Conviction and Judgment is purely for the cooldown reduction component if it's used at all. Personally, I just use quick recharges. Sure only has a few crucial level 5 tripods, namely any tripod that's related to the shock gauge, as well as damage tripods on Flash of Light must be prioritized. He has a few tripods that are leveled just because you have excess, so it's pretty easy to raise his tripods. These are mainly on utility skills that happen to have a damage tripod on them like the King's Advance or Sweep. There's a few flavor picks for tripods in a couple of the skills. For these, there's no right or wrong answer. It comes down to player preference and how the skill operates. For the emergency skill, on the second row, you have a choice between position occupancy or spiral bullet. Both add movement to the skill that allow it to function as a mini dash. Position occupancy gives slightly more damage to the skill, however, has a slightly longer animation time. Position occupancy backloads the damage, so if you use it as an engage, you won't lose as much of the damage versus Spiral Bullet, which steals its damage along the dash. If you think you'll often use this as a gap closer, you can select position occupancy, but if you feel like the slightly increased animation time will cause issues, it's better to stick with Spiral Bullet. The other skill that allows you to make a choice is the second highest contributing skill, Flash of Light. On the second row of the skill, there are two good choices for Shura. Ultra Close Strike reduces the range of the attack, but also reduces the casting animation by half a second. Prepared Attack is a bit more unique. It provides slightly more damage, but the main draw of this tripod is you assume a defensive stance when you cast Flash of Light. When you're in this stance, you have push immunity and take 50% less incoming damage for the next hit. If you are hit during this, you'll immediately launch the punch in a split second. If you're not hit during this, you'll launch the punch anyways after one second. If you time this well, you can actually launch Flash of Light much faster than if you use Ultra Close Strike, but that's depending on the boss's patterns, which is unreliable, especially during times where the boss is staggered or countered. Still, it can be useful as training wheels for being much safer during prog, as well as a few other clever scenarios like surviving Thaymine's domain expansion without needing time stop or having to dodge out of the way. The optimal elixir set for sure is critical, however if you can't get a 9-7 stone then master is a fine choice as well and will actually, in theory, actually provide more damage than critical in the case that you are running adrenaline level 1 as your plus 1. You can't recover master stacks while punching though so be mindful of that. Since master is a linear damage bonus and not backloaded like adrenaline even having 4 stacks is potentially more powerful than critical for Shura in that setup. Master should not be used if you're planning on running Adrenaline level 3. This is especially the case in early gearing. 
Vanguard could be used, but is not recommended since it actually alters your playstyle and forces you to use the space bar during times where you might not want to. Still, at the end of the day, I highly recommend taking the critical set as it requires the, light, the least amount of thinking and alterations to your playstyle. Breaker uses the standard card set everyone else uses, Lost Wind Cliff or Deep Dive for early progression, Light of Salvation for late game progression. For Guardian Raids, including the Trial ones, you have access to a very powerful combination of cards. Combining a Voice Calls and Platina's People will grant you 23.2% additional damage against Guardians, as well as 15% decreased incoming damage. Shira has a very hyperactive playstyle. If your identity gauge is not currently full, you must be casting something to work towards filling it no matter what the boss is currently doing. Certain skills have a priority to use over others due to cooldowns. The King's Advance namely has the highest priority to use among all stamina skills since it only has a 3 second cooldown when you factor the tripod and the gems. It's your main skill for cycling the stamina side of things. For your shock skills, Flash of Light has the highest priority followed by Emergency if you're at or near two stacks, then Jinpa Gangquan, and then Sweep, and then Eradicate. If you're not near two stacks of Emergency, then it has the lowest priority since it won't cause any cooldown jams while recovering the second stack. You can also hold onto Sweep if needed as a counter skill. When Shura State is ready, it should take the highest priority at the first convenient opportunity to use Shura Finisher. However, if Flash of Light is available, use that first to put it on cooldown while you're using your identity skill. Shura State, beyond being your biggest damage contributor, also allows all of your cooldowns to recover around 6 seconds while you are punching. Your Awakening completely refills your Identity Gauge. Be careful because the Identity is recharged momentarily after the last attack, so if you are grabbed by a boss during it, you will lose the Identity refill. If for whatever reason you launch your Awakening while you're in the Shura State, you won't lose the Identity Gauge refill. After your current Shura State depletes, the refill will occur immediately afterwards. Your awakening is best used during damage windows that are 8 to 10 seconds long. If the fight doesn't feature a damage window that long, then just use it at your earliest convenience to refill the gauge after using Shura Finisher. Using it earlier in the fight is ideal if you think you can get more uses of it. So if you're doing a boss gate that will only take 4 minutes, then it doesn't really matter when you use it as long as you do use it at some point. But if the fight takes, for example, 6 minutes, you'll want to use it within the first minute so you can get another refill towards the end of the fight. The main component of your playstyle is self-defense fighting, your parry skill. It has a multitude of uses to engage on patterns that are otherwise lethal, especially when combined with a supporter's shield. You can sit in attacks that would otherwise kill anyone else and continue punching. The activation of self-defense fighting also counts as a skill usage, so in scenarios where you need another adrenaline stack, it can be useful to begin your punches one skill sooner and use the shield activation as an adrenaline stack. It's very important that you never commit to punching without being able to reach 6 stacks of adrenaline since it accounts for a large amount of your Shura finisher's damage. Entering the Shura state counts as an identity skill and so does self-defense fighting, so you have to use at least 4 skills before activating your identity if you're in a rush. This might be something that some people might not like about the class, but the speed in which you input the basic attack key does influence the rate at which you can punch during Shura Finisher. This means that people who can click faster, or click while also hitting their basic attack key on their keyboard, or for the more nefarious sort, utilizing some sort of click macro, will finish their 57 hit punch cycle sooner than those who just hold the button down, and it's actually by a very noticeable amount of time. This matters a lot because you can bring down the total time of Sure Finisher to nearly 4.5 seconds at the maximum speed as opposed to 6 seconds if you just hold it down normally. The latter is especially a big problem because your adrenaline might fall off during the punches without using self-defense fighting if it takes that long, whereas if you can do it fast enough, you can easily maintain adrenaline by casting a skill as soon as your punches end. More importantly, with enough speed, you can actually activate a second punch cycle within the same identity, allowing you to fit in nearly 70 to 75 punches, two of which are finishing hooks. You'll mainly notice this if other characters in your party provide you an attack speed synergy during your Shura Finisher. Another tech with Shura Finisher that greatly increases its damage is called Sequence Breaking. This is stopping the current string of punches early to begin a new sequence in the middle of the same identity. Doing this increases the overall number of punches and adds an additional finishing hook to the overall amount of punches. 
having more attack speed will help with this though with enough attack speed you can actually just finish the full sequence and begin a new one without having to do the cancel if you aren't getting attack speed from additional sources though and just have the default amount which is around 123 percent with yearning plus 3.5 percent or more from stronghold fees letting go of the basic attack key when the gauge is between 80 and 40 percent remaining and beginning a new sequence will almost always net you 12 percent more damage on sure finisher in some cases though you can gain 25 percent more damage though the timing on this is still being researched especially on lower attack speed thresholds Shura has excellent team utility across the board. As a front attacker, he shares the trait of other front attackers having fast counters, solid stagger, and high amounts of weak point. For your counters, you have two low cooldown, short ranged punches with a small built-in dash that both counter lightning strike and sweep. One is a stamina skill and one is a shock skill, but as they're both core to building Shura energy, there can be times where neither is available. For weak point, your rotation has seven, Still, remember to cycle your stamina and shock skills, though, even while doing the weak point check, unless your Shura energy is already full, then it doesn't matter if you alternate or not. For stagger, you have a lot of fast casting skills that deal moderate stagger values. Unfortunately, a lot of the stagger checks in Lost Ark also include damage reduction, which makes people withhold their stronger skills. Never use Shura finisher for stagger, unless it's towards the end of a stagger check and there is no DR involved. One, for the amount of time it takes to do all the punches, the stagger is terrible. Two, supporter buffs come, well, typically after the stagger check and often not during. And obviously you don't want to be seized, you don't want to send your strongest skill into DR if it's present. Uh, Flash of Light should also be withheld for stagger checks for its damage, but everything else is fair game to send into the stagger check. If your sure energy is empty, it's also okay to burn your awakening for stagger to refill the gauge before the check is complete, but be aware that the stagger that it deals is also kind of low for the animation time, so there can be concerns of stagger check fail if you do that. Breaker Chaos Dungeon isn't really very good or exciting. He has a skill that resets itself, but the damage on it is really, really low because the tripod that lowers its cooldown doesn't increase its damage. Jungwall Dance's second tripod on the last row reduces cooldown based off of target's hit. But if you're doing the 5 damage gem build, you might not actually have a damage gem for this, in which case it's really highly advised to at least keep one of the event gems for this purpose should you graduate to level 9 and 10 gems later on. You'll also still have to build shock gauge to use it each time, so you're going to be taking stamina skills to alternate with it. Like always, you'll ideally want to not have grudge since it doesn't do anything in Chaos Dungeon. Uh, Contender is decent and Preemptive Strike actually isn't very useful since your main mob clearing skill is a multi-hit skill. The way of the Shura engraving is still useful for its passive damage and movement speed even if you won't really be using the Shura finisher in there. Having a high swiftness build is also a plus if you want to be able to use Chiangwall Dance with absolutely no cooldown. As always, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I've been a bit more proactive to answering questions in videos these days, so I'll try to get to it when I see it, either during a stream or when I have time on the side. Uh, this is a little bit different than my usual overview type videos. I normally don't do guides because guides tend to eventually become outdated, especially after balance changes. So I hope that this one stays relevant for a good while. I hope that you guys enjoy Breaker. Breaker is my main these days. I love the class. Um, I was a big fan of the Infighter or Monk class from Dungeon Fighter Online. So when they announced Breaker uh, a long, long time ago, I made a promise that if this class was anything remotely close to that class fantasy from DFO, that I would make the commitment to main swap to it you know this arbitrary main swap or main designator and uh here we are and i don't regret the decision this class is basically everything that i hoped it would be uh so i really hope that you enjoy it too and i'll see you on the next video